Dustin High School where three student football athletes sign their letters of intent on where they will play college football taking place in the main gym. The Rocky Campus defensive lineman Johnny Bowens put pen to paper as he heads off to Oregon. Big tight end Gavin Harris at 6'3", 210 pounds decided the Ivy League will be best for him at Princeton and wide receiver Anthony Evans the third is headed to Georgia. How about that? Hey man, I can't turn down this opportunity. And shoot, they winning, so, you know, I feel me, and I can come in and make an immediate impact. Shoot, I just came down. I actually flew back in last night uh, from Georgia. I practiced all week, and, um, you know, I, I balled out, so, you know, I'm no looking back. Uh, I started off with the Cornell offer, and I was like, okay, this is Ivy League. You know, I can really do this. So I kept getting into it, and I took an official visit up to Princeton, and it just felt like home. Like, all the coaches out there is, like, family out there. Like, some of the uh, coaches from a and went to uh, Oregon, so, like, it was a, it was a no-brainer. Pro football coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. Dallas Cowboys started the week off as six-point underdogs against the Philadelphia Eagles on Saturday Christmas Eve. But after it was announced yesterday, the Eagles be without their star quarterback, Jalen Hurts. Now the Cowboys have been installed as four-and-a-half-point favorites. Hurts tried to give it a go, but after having that throwing shoulder slammed into the turf by Travis Gibson in the third quarter, the Eagles' 25-20 win over the Bears. It was just a... Wasn't a good idea to risk further injury this week. That's a huge setback when you consider the Eagles are playing for the NFC East title and home field advantage throughout the NFC playoffs with a win. Going into this game, Dak Prescott is 7-3 against the Eagles, 26-6 against division opponents. What does that say to Prescott going into the showdown on Saturday? It just that just shows when you play a team that you're familiar with. Obviously, playing teams twice a year um, obviously helps, and uh, we're familiar with this team. Um, so, as you said, it's a division game. All the past stats, all the numbers, statistics up to this point in the season, none of that stuff matters. Uh, it's about who comes out there, who's more physical, um, who's focused, and uh, who gets the job better, uh, who gets the job done better in those 60 minutes. So, uh, excited for it. All right, meantime, after taking the Kansas City Chiefs to overtime, only to lose 30-24, to now the Houston Texans have to travel to Tennessee to take on the Titans, where they are only three-point underdogs looking for just their second win of the season. The Texans have been enjoying success as both Davis Mills and Jeff Driscoll have been getting snaps at quarterback during the same games. How has Mills seen defenses respond to that game plan? Having to defend two quarterbacks, we're able to do uh, two different things, and we have a ton of variations and different uh, personnel and formations um, in each of our kind of packages. And it just gives the defense a lot to defend and a lot to prepare for during the week. So um, if we can continue to mix that up, it kind of simplifies um, what they can do because they have to prepare for so many looks during the week that they can't add in all these complex blitz looks and um, disguises for certain coverages. So um, it just kind of simplifies the defense for us. All right, kickoff for the Texans. The Titans will be at noon. And check out this. The Valero Alamo as a field is being painted today in preparation for kickoff of their 30th anniversary game. This coming Thursday, when the 20th ranked Texas Longhorns face the 12th ranked Washington Huskies inside the Alamo Dome. The Longhorns will be arriving tomorrow on Christmas Eve, while the Huskies touch down on Christmas Day. This will be the sixth trip to San Antonio for the Longhorns, where they are four and one overall. And this will only be the second trip for the Huskies when Steve Sarkeesian, now the head coach of UT, was their head coach back in 2011. Losing to Baylor 67 to 56 in the highest scoring bowl game ever. It's always <laughs> an exciting game. Yeah, looking forward to it. All right, thanks, Greg. We'll be right back. The House of Representatives passing a key series of bills that fund the government, and they did it just hours before their Friday midnight deadline. The $1.7 trillion spending package includes aid for Ukraine, disaster assistance, even a ban on TikTok on government devices. But it was not without opposition. ABC's Jay O'Brien with the latest from Washington. Hours before a potential government shutdown, the House of Representatives passing a $1.7 trillion spending package. The series of bills includes $45 billion in assistance for Ukraine, $858 billion in military spending, that includes a pay raise for troops, and $40 billion in disaster relief for Americans impacted by wildfires, earthquakes, and hurricanes. It also includes protections for pregnant workers, including expanding breastfeeding accommodations in the workplace, funding for child care to assist low-income families, banning of TikTok on government devices, and reforms of the Electoral Count Act, the law that former President Trump and his allies tried to abuse to overturn the 2020 election. Democrats celebrating. Indeed, this bill puts people over politics. But a majority of House Republicans angered by how the deal was pushed through Congress. The appropriations process has failed the American public, and there's no greater example 
of the nail in the coffin of the greatest failure of a one-party rule of the House, the Senate, and the presidency of this bill here. The yeas are 68, the nays are 29. The bill passed the Senate Thursday after drawn out negotiations, 18 Republicans ultimately supporting the package along with all Senate Democrats. And I say this about my colleagues, their unity was miraculous. And uh, wow. This spending package does not include about $10 billion to fight COVID, something the Biden administration had asked for but faced resistance from some Republicans in Congress. It now heads to President Biden's desk for his signature. Jay O'Brien, ABC News, Washington. Flu season hit harder and faster than usual this year. While flu activity is still high, it has decreased for the second week in a row. New CDC data shows roughly 21,000 new hospitalizations last week. That's down from a high of more than 26,000 two weeks earlier. That's the week after Thanksgiving. Respiratory virus activity still considered high or very high in nearly every state, and it could get worse with holiday travel and gatherings. The CDC estimates at least 18 million illnesses, 190,000 hospitalizations, and 12,000 deaths from flu this season. More bad news for Twitter employees just before Christmas. There are more layoffs happening there. Additional workers are being fired as part of ongoing downsizing under new owner Elon Musk. That's according to tweets from affected workers who said the layoffs included employees from the public policy as well as media and entertainment teams. A former Twitter employee with knowledge of those layoffs said the public policy team was cut to about 15 employees. Prior to the takeover, that department had 60 employees. Musk's team laid off about half of Twitter's workforce last month and later pushed out hundreds of additional workers. A shooting in central Paris has left at least three people dead and three others injured. The suspected shooter taken into custody, but so far investigators do not have a motive for the shooting. Here's ABC's Alexis Christophorus. Police cordoned off a busy street in central Paris after a gunman allegedly went on a shooting rampage Friday afternoon. The city's mayor says it took place at a Kurdish cultural center and nearby businesses. A 69-year-old suspect was taken into custody and transferred to a hospital where he's reportedly in stable condition. Authorities confirm the alleged attacker was already known to police from two prior incidents. One of those incidents, an attack on a migrant camp where he slashed tents with a sword in December of last year. Year. He had recently been released from prison. The city's mayor says they do not know the motive for these shootings. The Paris prosecutor's office says potential racist motives for today's attack will be part of the investigation. Anti-terrorism prosecutors have been in contact with investigators. France did see a string of deadly attacks by Islamic extremists in 2015 and 16 and remains on alert for terrorism-related violence. Alexis Christophorus, ABC News, New York. After the break, travel trouble, millions of Americans dealing with that for the holidays, and now they're stuck due to this winter storm. Hear from travelers what they're going through and the latest on how it's affecting people getting to and from. Next. Holiday traditions at the Sears household. We decorate for Christmas inside and outside, but we don't start till the day after Thanksgiving. Inside, we always have a nativity scene set up somewhere. And our Christmas morning is when we open up the packages and enjoy our time together. These days, usually just me and my wife for a good part of the day. And then we have a ham for our Christmas lunch. And I wanna wish you and yours a very Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. Millions of Americans hitting the roads and taking to the skies, traveling, hopefully, to their holiday destinations. But as ABC's Alexis Christophorus shows us, the severe winter storm is impacting much of the country, making travel difficult and in some areas downright impossible. It's being called a once-in-a-generation storm. Thousands of flights canceled on this Friday before Christmas Eve. See, everybody's so frustrated. We all have the same story. Major airline hubs being affected in cities like New York, Boston, and Chicago. A lot of my friends who have later flights are stuck there for now, but... Um, yeah, so narrowly avoided it. I was really happy to have my early flight so I could get back home. Some just taking the delays in stride. Oh no, I forgot my pillow. That means that we're going to use this as a nice little emergency pillow. Runways at Seattle's airport closed due to the ice. The city's mass transit system also shut down. 
The storm bringing blizzard conditions to the Midwest, while damaging winds knocked out power to over a million customers from Texas to New England as temperatures plunge. The bone-chilling cold stretching all the way down to the Gulf Coast. In Dallas, temperatures plummeting 21 degrees in just one hour. The bomb cyclone now impacting the northeast, causing severe flooding in New York City and some surrounding areas. So not as bad as Superstorm Sandy, of course, but a little bit scary. As temperatures drop, there are concerns all that water could freeze, creating dangerous icy conditions. While this is the coldest Christmas in decades, this holiday polar plunge won't last for long. Above average temperatures are forecast for much of the country as we move closer to the new year. Alexis Christophorus, ABC News, New York. You know, you see those pictures, mm -hmm. and the blizzard conditions and the snow plows in the 20s with some sunshine during the day. Yeah. We're doing all right. We're Not doing all that just bad. That. Especially on a holiday weekend, right? When everyone's kind of out and about, or at least trying to get out and about, that's the last thing we want to deal with is delays and issues out there on the roadways. Nothing like that here in South Central Texas specifically, but it is still plenty cold out there. Temperatures right now, in the 20s and low 30s out there. The good news is winds are coming down, so wind chills not as big of an issue as we head into the overnight hours. But still, it is going to be plenty cold out there to kickstart our Christmas Eve. We're in, again, the upper 20s, low 30s. How about upper teens and low 20s? First thing tomorrow morning, another hard freeze expected into our Sunday morning, but the afternoons will start to warm, and that warming trend continues into next week. We'll have all those details after the break. In the buzz today, it is a rare thing to catch on camera. An Alaska couple says their doorbell camera recorded a moose shedding its antlers. Now, after the moose shed the antlers, it then took off. So the couple went outside to collect the rack. It looked a little startled there. According to U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, moose usually shed their antlers in the winter for two reasons. It is the end of their breeding season and antlers are heavy and can become a burden for animals to carry around when they are trying to eat enough to survive the cold. I don't think I've ever seen Those that Those are before. huge. Yeah. Wow. For a lot of people, Christmas trees, of course, a big part of their tradition. But in Louisiana, a long-running environmental effort has used trees to fill a crucial hole in the rebuilding of a coastal habitat. Several state government agencies have partnered to collect thousands of trees after the holidays and then use them to rebuild dwindling coastal marshlands. This is pretty cool. The aerial effort named Operation Tree Drop uses National Guard helicopters to line a eroded marshlands with the dead trees, which then act to trap and hold sediment, helping create more land and stable environments for wildlife. All right, happy Festivus, the holiday for the rest of us, made famous, of course, by a Seinfeld episode. A Reader's Digest editor actually created a modern version of the very obscure holiday back in 1966. His son, a writer for Seinfeld, made it the centerpiece of an episode in 1997. We're going to explain what you're watching mm -hmm. here. Here's how you celebrate. Instead of a Christmas tree, you decorate an aluminum pole, serve dinner, during which the airing of the grievances takes place. That's when people take turns explaining how others have disappointed them over the years. After dinner, it's time for the feats of strength. That involves wrestling the head of the household until they are pinned. Bring it on, family. I've seen some pretty good Festivus tweets uh, today. Oh, I'm sure. But we'll leave that content on Twitter. Yes. Yeah, we won't talk about that here. Well, it's been plenty cold for any Festivus celebration. Yeah, there may be some complaining about that. Yeah, maybe just a little bit. It definitely is uh, very, very cold out there for any Friday evening plans, any travel plans, getting to your holiday destinations across South Central Texas. And really, as we head into the upcoming holiday weekend, still hard freezes expected in the mornings. But we'll start to see those afternoon temperatures warm up a little bit more each and every afternoon. But before we can get there, let's recap what we saw earlier this morning. 
Morning lows across the area. We got down to 16 degrees here in San Antonio. Same up in New Braunfels, 17 in Gonzales, 20 in Pleasanton this morning. Wake up temperature of 12 degrees up in Kerrville. And of course, we still did have those gusty north winds in place earlier today. So when you factored that in with the cold air, those wind chill values and feels like temperatures were in the single digits and even in spots below zero. Now, thankfully, not as bad as we head into tomorrow morning in terms of the feels like temperatures, but it is still going to be plenty cold out there. And that is exactly what we're finding this evening. 29 the temperature right now in San Antonio. Most of us at or below that 32 degree mark. It's 32 in Hondo, 25 in Rock Springs. Del Rio still above freezing right now. 37, it's 35 in Catula, but that's not going to last long as we see those temperatures drop off yet again tonight and into tomorrow morning. But we've been talking about those wind chill values after that front moved through yesterday. It picked up that very, very gusty north wind. We had wind gusts upwards of 40 to even 45 miles per hour at times. Not the case here this evening as those winds do subside. And again, it is still going to be plenty cold out there early tomorrow morning, but at least the wind won't be as big of a factor compared to what we saw earlier this morning, but still we need to prep for yet another hard freeze waking up to the upper teens, low twenties in and around San Antonio. 17 is that official forecast low by tomorrow morning here in town. 20 in New Braunfels, 19 in Hondo, 17 in Castroville, as well as over in Utopia. So again, I know you don't need me to tell you this because we've been talking about it all week long, but make sure that we are prepping the four P's, bringing pets indoors, of course, covering sensitive plants, bringing in potted plants to be safe there as well, protecting those pipes, turning off sprinkler systems and just checking in on everybody, making sure that everybody is staying as warm as they possibly can. There's that sunshine, though, that sticks with us into the holiday weekend. We saw plenty of it today. It was beautiful out there, though still very cold. That sunshine will help those temperatures warm a bit more than what we saw earlier today, around 39 degrees here in town by 2 p.m. We've got a forecast high around 41 officially here in town tomorrow, 38 up in Bernie, 41 in Divine, 41 in Poteet out there in northern Atascosa County. Warmer than today, yes, but still chilly out there. So you will definitely want to bundle up really in the mornings and then still needing the jacket into the afternoons as well. But as we head into the overnight hours tomorrow, Santa Claus coming to town, yet another hard freeze expected, but notice by Christmas day afternoon, Sunday afternoon. Those temperatures are warming even more so afternoon highs closer to about 50. And then as we head into next week, these are your morning low temperatures. Another freeze possible by Monday morning, but then we see that warming trend really take off and that's not just going to be the case into the morning hours, but also into the afternoons, upper 50s by Monday, low 60s by Tuesday. And then in typical Texas fashion, as we get into the second half of next week, those temperatures continue to warm potentially into the low 70s. So some changes now on the upward trend into next week, guys. All right. Thank you, Mia. Old man winter will be back. Don't worry. <laughs> In case you missed it, coming up next. An unexpected discovery on a property in Southwest Bear County. The Bear County Sheriff's Office says that a human skull was discovered in a wooded area on a property off of Loop 1604 near Pew Road. The Bear County Sheriff's Office has been searching, but so far no other human remains have been found in the area. There was really nothing else of, of evidentiary value that was found last night. Today, search crews are using cadaver dogs and dozens of trained volunteers to find more clues. We're telling our folks to look out for or, you know, other other bones, anything that looks like a shallow grave, uh, any jewelry, any clothing. When Leon Valley firefighters arrived to this scene on your screen, they tell us flames were shooting out of the attic. Now the fire broke out at a home around one this morning. It happened on a street called Settlers Ridge. This is near Bandera Road. Fire crews were able to get everyone out of the house safely and got the fire knocked down quickly. The House Select Committee released its 845-page final report on the January 6th in 
insurrection last night. Committee members recommended four criminal charges to be filed against former President Donald Trump as a result of their year and a half long investigation. There is also a call for the 14th Amendment to be invoked to prevent anyone involved in the insurrection from running for re-election or serving in elected office again. Hefty unveiling a snack scarf. Oh. The household products maker calls this the perfect way to keep you warm and also secretly fill your scarf with your favorite party foods to take home. The plaid design snack scarf comes in two sizes, quart and gallon. They say the scarf retails for less than $3 each. All right, another hard freeze expected overnight tonight and into early tomorrow morning, waking up to the upper teens, low 20s across the area. Still plenty of sunshine found out there tomorrow, so that will help our temperatures warm into the afternoons. Again, warmer than what we saw today, upper 30s, low 40s, but still going to want to bundle up throughout the day. And again on Christmas Sunday, but those afternoon highs are closer to 50, and then we'll continue that warming trend all the way through next week, guys. So still need the jackets for a little while. Yeah, bundle up. Thank you, Mia, and thank you for watching the News at 6. Be back here for the night beat tonight at 10. Have a good evening.